Okay, right, we're coming into the last few mechanisms that we're going to cover this semester. And I promise we're going to do three different reactions in parallel, all generalizable and all very powerful for synthesis. Um, the last one we did was we can turn an acid chloride into an acid, and that would involve adding water to the acid chloride. Again, acid chlorides, acid bromides, acid iodides are all equivalently reactive as far as we're concerned. Now we're going to add, rather than water, an alcohol. And I had mentioned in the last video that since both water and alcohol contain the OH group, which is the source of reactivity here, they would react similarly. So we'll go ahead and work through the mechanism and hopefully you'll see the extreme parallel. So let's start with a slightly different starting material because again, this is fully generalizable in terms of you can have many different acid chlorides or acid bromides or acid iodides and many different alcohols. For water, there's only one water molecule. But this one we're going to call ethanoyl chloride. And this guy is a derivative of ethanoic acid. So here's the ethanoyl group. And then, of course, the chloride is just the Cl that's on there. So this is a very potent reactant, the ethanoyl chloride. And if we're going to go ahead and add that to an alcohol, so let's go ahead and use fairly simple alcohol methanol. CH3OH. And the key, again, is that this OH group is the source of the reactivity here. And so if we had an H here, it would be water. Since we have a methyl group, it would be an alcohol. If we had a phenyl group, it'd be a phenol. But the core of the reactivity is going to be the same. So hopefully you remember the mechanism of hydrolysis of acid chlorides. The first step was a nucleophilic attack of the O and the OH group on the carbonyl. And in order to keep this carbon from violating the octet rule, then we have to push the pi bond on to be a lone pair on that oxygen. So when we go ahead and do that, the methyl group of the ethanoyl chloride just stays the same and is going to be copied over and over. That's again another source where this could be a phenyl, this could be an ethyl, this could be an isobutyl. The reactivity is going to be the same because the reactive part is the functional group, the acid chloride part, and this just comes along for the ride. So that's where you can change this to all kinds of complicated stuff. The reactivity is here, and so it's understandable. The, um, after you do the electron push that I indicated with the electron arrows, the pi bond becomes a lone pair, so we end up with the formally negative oxygen. We get the tetrahedral intermediate. And if you look at your notes on the last mechanism I did, it should look extremely similar to this. Right, so here's where we add the methanol to the carbonyl. And we end up with maxonium formerly negative oxygen, and this tetrahedral intermediate that's from the addition of the methanol to the ethanoid chloride. The methanol, again, is a nucleophile. Its electron pair is looking for positive charge. It's the polarity of the carbonyl that make this electrophilic. That's so an electrophile. And so we get this. Now, then we have this good leaving group, the chloride. So we're going to have the leaving group leave in the second step of the mechanism. And we're going to reform the carbonyl double bond. So there we have nucleophilic attack of the alcohol on the carbonyl. Then when we have this reactive intermediate, we have the leaving group, the chloride. And that allows the carbonyl to reform.
and the alcohol is still there again with the formal positive charge here when this electron pair was shared and became this bond it reduced the electron count on this oxygen for formal charge purposes so we end up with a formally positive oxygen because it has one two three four five electrons assigned to it and then the methyl group is still just hanging out there the rest of the molecule. So here's another intermediate where it looks like a protonated ester. So if you remember we went through a bunch of different functional groups and when you have a carbonyl next to an oxygen without a hydrogen on it then it's going to be an ester. So what we're going to have to do now is we have a protonated product here we're going to deprotonate it and so now this chloride comes around and grabs the H plus off the ester turns the bonding pair into a lone pair and this is why I like understanding the mechanism of acid base reactions that the electron pair in the base goes and grabs the H plus off the acid then the bonding pair turns into a lone pair if through repetition of lots of different examples of that you've got that sort of down and it's part of your vocabulary and your understanding now, then this is really pretty manageable. Now we have this as our final product, which is an ester. And the way that we named the esters is they're derived from acids. So this guy would be ethanoic acid. So if we Consider this part, that'd be like the ethanoic acid without the H+, plus, which would be ethanoate. So the part attached to carb the carbonyl is part of the parent group. Two carbons, eth, and this is like ethanoic acid without the H on it, or ethanoate. And then the thing that's attached to the oxygen here is a methyl group, so this ester is called methyl ethanoate and it's an ester functionality. The ester part is this part in the square with the carbon attached to it rather than the hydrogen that would make it an acid. So if you wanted an ester, a great way to do it is to take a very reactive acid halide like ethanoyl chloride, add an alcohol, and that's going to bond the oxygen of the alcohol to the carbonyl with the chloride leaving and deprotonating. Oftentimes you're going to throw a little bit of base in here to suck up the HCl that you're forming so it doesn't get too acidic. But there we go. And like I said, if you go ahead and place this sheet of paper next to the sheet of paper that we did before, and I can make it look even closer, by adding in some of the notations I put here. But this is the same mechanism. Again, different reactants, so we get different products. But the nucleophilic attack on the carbonyl to the tetrahedral intermediate, to the chloride leaving group leaving, to give another intermediate that has to be deprotonated by the chloride to the final product, that exactly the same as this. Again, we could add some notation here. We call this a nucleophile because it's going for the positive charge. We could also call this a base because it's going for an H plus. So here's acid intermediate, which is the electrophile. So we can add some terminology, but these steps for the alcoholysis of acid chlorides are the same as the steps for the hydrolysis of acid chlorides. Just different reactants lead to different products. Mechanism is the same. And if you understand those, then understanding aminolysis of acid chlorides, where we react an amine or ammonia with an acid chloride, which I'll do in the next video, will be equally straightforward and the same basic three steps. Nucleophilic attack, leaving of the chloride or other halide, and then deprotonation to yield the final product. So we'll take a look at that in a little bit.